Come one, come all, and look upon thy works. And whilst no I technically didn't make this firearm, an Australian did, and I think that counts for something. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the Taipan X. This firearm is a pump action straight pull chambered in 223 and 556. Now, as mentioned previously, this firearm is manufactured right here in Australia, but manufactured by who, you might ask? Let me introduce today's sponsor. Southern Cross Small Arms are an independently owned Australian manufacturer of firearms, as well as some other cool things like chassis and accessories. They're actually generous enough to give me this rifle so that I can create this video and some other content that I'm going to be providing back for them for them to use in their own marketing. So guys, go show the team over at Southern Cross Small Arms some love. I really cannot thank them enough for this. Our second sponsor for today's video is Magnum Sports. Magnum Sports are a firearms dealer in Roseville, Sydney, who provided me with some ammo and allowed me to shoot this really a lot more than what I initially would have afforded in the first place, so again, thank you. So now that's out of the way, let's go over some of the features of this firearm. So starting at the rear of the stock, you have your QD mounting point here, and a second one here, just at the bottom of the lower receiver. You can use these to mount a variety of things. I personally was using a Magpul QD sling. If you haven't seen these in action before, it is quite literally just a push in, and then that's in, and then you can push that to release. On the upper part of our stock, you have your adjustable comb. You can rise that up to get a better cheek weld, but being that I have the facial structure of a thumb, I have just left it at its lowest point. Moving up to the receiver, Standard AR-15 grip, you can of course swap that out for the absolute plethora of aftermarket options available, but the rubber grip has done me just fine. Um, even when I was sweating up on the day, it was pretty hot out in the sun, I had a very comfortable grip and at no point did it feel like it was gonna come out of my hand. Back to this side of the receiver, you have your straight pull lever. You can actually completely remove that. It is just sitting in there on an Allen head screw. Um, Really good if you're not planning on using the straight pull mechanism. Um, if you're out hunting in the bush and you don't want that catching on scrub, you can take it out, super easy, super easy to do on the field. You literally just need an Allen head. An Allen key. Your safety also follows the very standard AR-15 lever safety, safe and bang. You do, however, get a second additional safety feature, the bolt lock. When engaged, it completely stops the bolt from coming forward. As you can see here, that is totally secure in place. To disengage that mechanism, all I'm going to do is push that pin through to the other side, and now the action can cycle freely. To re-engage, all I'm going to do is bring the bolt back to the rear, push on through, and it has again locked in place. Really good additional safety feature to prevent any accidental discharges, which, you know, no one likes accidental discharges. Magazine release just in front of the trigger there, just a push button, out comes the magazine. Magazines are a Magpul P-Mag. Currently I'm using the 10 round magazines, so you get two 10 rounders in the box. Um, naturally being Magpul P-Mags, you can get higher capacity magazines depending on, of course, your license and the regulations of your state, your country, you get the idea. Next up, we have a new feature that wasn't present on its predecessor, the Taipan Light, the case deflector. Now, if you're someone that doesn't like having hot brass come back and scorch you, this is a really cool feature. If you are someone that likes having hot brass come back and scorch you, seek a therapist. <laughs> You've of course got a standard pick rail running the length of the receiver all the way to the end of the handguard. Um, overshooting this, I had a Holosun Red Dot as well as a Loophole VX Freedom 3-9 that I ripped off my Ruger. It probably wasn't sitting as high as it should, but I literally just ripped it off another gun and it worked fine for the day. But now the moment you've all been waiting for. So your pump action on this is actually a spring assisted pump action. And what I mean by that is that you have a big ass spring sitting on the outside of the barrel and the inside of the handguard that makes cycling this guy a hell of a lot easier than what a traditional pump action would be. Really neat feature to reduce arm fatigue on a big day of shooting, or if you're an individual like me that has a body muscle percentage of below 0%. Limp Noodle Arm Gang, unite. Handguards running your M-Lock mounting platform, really easy for mounting just about any accessory you can think of on there, from bipods to QD mounts that I left on there because I'm lazy. And finally, your barrel is a 1 in 8 twist rate barrel, and is threaded so you can fit a muzzle device. So now that you know a little more about this gun, let's get to the shooty part. Oh, and a little disclaimer here, don't use my shooting as a benchmark for the accuracy of this firearm. I like firearms, I like working in the firearm industry, I'm about as far away from a competition shooter as it gets though. So again, don't use me as a benchmark for precision shooting. So if these shots suck, I am uh, currently lying in a green ant's nest. I have been bitten once already, so it's definitely not that I'm just a really crappy shooter. You guys gotta believe me.
bad. Let's go check it out. Okay, so look, it's not my finest work, but I think taking into consideration the green ant injury sustained uh, immediately before shooting, I'm not, uh, I'm not too unhappy with that. So that would probably be at about 60, 60, 70 yard. Rough guess. We'll, uh, we'll move on to some freehand and give it a go. There's only ways, like, I think it's about, I weighed it this morning, unloaded, and it was about 4.3 kilos, so offhand shouldn't be too difficult with it. Let's give it a go. By Bob Ag's ergonomics brother. I think I hit it one of those times. Oh, shit. <laughs> Perfect shots. <laughs> the spring assist mechanism on that pump actually does make that really, really easy uh, for people that can aim really well and for people that can't aim really, really well as, uh, as we have found here today. But uh, hey, let's uh, let's rock a red dot on this guy. Look super cool with it and uh, do some more shots. So we've come up a bit close to the target. I've put my Holson red dot on this guy. We're just gonna cycle as many rounds as quickly as possible and uh, see if we have any jams or any issues. And uh, just look cool in the process as well, I guess. Let's do it. So look, there were a couple times where it was a bit harder to come forward than others, but no actual malfunctions, no ceasing of the fire. <sighs> I'm not doing that as a second take, so that ceasing the fire is what we're rolling with. It was, it was a lot of fun, actually. <laughs> so that brings us to the end of today's video. Guys, again, I just want to take the opportunity while I have it to thank Southern Cross Small Arms again. Seriously, go check them out. They do some really cool stuff. I'm excited to see what they do in the future. This video definitely would not have been possible without them, so show them some love. So guys, if you liked this video, leave a comment below. If you didn't like this video, I tried my best. But if you have any questions about this firearm or you'd like to see a bit more of it, let me know in the comments below. And stay tuned, we have another video coming out shortly, and to give you a hint, I may or may not have something to do with one of these fat-ass puppies.